Welcome to Engaged Podcast, where you have your hosts, Anthony Cloditis and uh, Sex. <laughs> this week we'll be piggybacking off of the four components, the practical components of James that I spoke about. And Seth is going to be uh, teasing out some of those components. We're going to break them down, get a little more practical. And we're going to be looking at one person in the Bible that perfectly encapsulates those four elements. It's going to be great. You guys are going to enjoy it. Pastor Anthony, last week you talked about um, the COVID-19 virus, and you applied the book of James to it, and you talked about a bunch of four very, I think, very practical elements. You talked about um, wisdom and leadership and loving your neighbor and all that. Do you want to quickly just run through what those things were? Yeah, so I talked about four practical ways that we could address what's going on in the world around us. God addresses it. The first was utilizing wisdom. The second is thinking about our character. The third is taking it easy on our leadership. And the fourth is the call to love our neighbors. So this week, how... Did you? How did you find yourself thinking of things differently after giving that lesson? Because I could tell you how I saw things a little bit differently. Well, let's put it this way. Let me let me come at it a different way. How did I even come up with these four things? I I've been watching the world around us, whether it's television, Facebook, and I've also experienced the world around us going to the stores and watching people's reactions. And I think it's important to have what's called a Christian worldview. That is, you filter things through and screen things through the scriptures. So the more of the Bible you're filled with, the more that's a part of your life, the more you'll have a solid Christian worldview. So as I was experiencing these things, it was these scriptures that were screaming to me, Um, if not scriptures, they were themes. And and probably, to be honest, the biggest one was loving your neighbor. You know, it just, that amazes me so much because when I see people telling others to be kind and treat others nicely, to care for the elderly, that is a distinctly Christian worldview, whether people want to realize that or not. Why is that important? It's important because if someone claims to be an atheist or a non-believer, and they're also claiming to want to care for their neighbor, what they don't understand is they are displaying the very facts displayed in Genesis with creation, that man is created in the image of God, therefore we have an incredible amount of significance. So, you know, you hear people talking about this virus like, hey, I'm young, it's not going to affect me. It only affects those that are elderly with uh, other diseases. That's a, pr- that's a pretty mean thing to say, first of all. I have a dad that would be considered elderly, and I love him. And I'm sure people listening to this have people that they know that are elderly that this could affect. So first of all, that's a, that's a, a pretty low thing to say. It's a low mindset. But secondly, every time you claim to want to care for your neighbor when you don't have to, it's because you're realizing that we are our brother's keeper. You're realizing that we are more important than, let's say, the animal kingdom, and we're called to love our neighbors ourselves. So that was the big thing on my mind 
all week. So then I started thinking about, okay, I've been preaching through James, and I know he talks a lot about wisdom, and when do we need wisdom? We need wisdom when things are difficult, when things are unclear. And so James addresses that, and he addresses other issues that are tied to issues like the coronavirus. He talks about wisdom. He talks about character. He talks about leadership. Those are all things that are pretty high in our society right now. There are things that people are looking at others to see if there's character or a lack thereof. They're judging our leaders pretty harshly, whether that's President Trump or local church leaders or government leaders, pretty harshly right now. So all of that, all of those points were born out of, you know, the Bible addresses some of these issues, and let's get that message out there to help uh, encourage others and, and let them see that God is relevant all the time, but I think even more so as people are are in a state of panic. I definitely agree. I, I could tell you just from when you gave your, your met your message talk, whatever you want to call it, one of the things that I immediately found myself changing, and I, if, you, if you even listen to this podcast for an even five or six minutes, you know that I'm always the one who's pinpointing and uh, you know, uh, very critical of whoever we're talking about. So like, I remember the first one, I was really harsh on Christians. And then the last one I talked about millennials. So I'm usually the critical one. And we, me and my wife, we didn't go out and shop the first day and buy all the toilet paper in the world. We, we didn't do that. We were the ones who went just like last week and the, the shelves were completely empty. And I've caught myself demeaning those people that bought all that stuff too. Cause we, I have two small kids. We couldn't find baby wipes. There was no baby wipes to be found. And me and my wife are going back and forth about, you know, what kind of idiot buys all the baby wipes in the world when there are other parents who need baby wipes. And I immediately with a thought back to the love your neighbor thing, it's it, that goes to the people who did buy all the toilet paper in the world, like who are hoarding it because they're sinful human beings as well. And I need to love them just like they need to love people like me, my wife, who, you know, we have kids, we need to buy the baby wipes. Um, so it worked on me in the reverse, but also in the same way too, we were shopping for just different groceries. And there were a lot of times that we thought to ourselves, is this type of food necessary? Like one of the things that, no, I'm just going to say it was cookie dough. I put back the cookie dough because it was like, is that a necessary thing for us to eat? No. We went for something that was a lot more healthy and would stretch out for a number of days. So things like beef stew, that could be... So we were thinking more critically, but at the same time as we were going through, we were like, let's not hoard. Let's not buy more than what we normally would because I'm sure there's going to be somebody else who's going to be coming today who needs this. And isn't that cool? I'm, I'm reminded of in the Old Testament how God instructed the Israelites, when they get settled in their land, that when it's time for the harvest, that they were instructed to leave behind a certain amount of yes. vegetables right. and fruit. And the reason he did that is because they knew themselves the pain of going without, coming from Egypt. Mm -hmm. And what you're describing is not, not that per se, but it's the idea yeah. that, man, this thing, God has already instilled in us this idea, but also he instructs us and gives us practical wisdom on how to do these things. Yeah. And my favorite way, I guess, you know, to love your neighbor as yourself is used all throughout the Bible, but probably the best way in my mind is Romans 13, 8. And Paul just says, owe nothing to anyone except to love one another, for he who loves his neighbor has fulfilled the law. So as we get off this subject, that's a great summational verse. Owe nothing to anyone except to love one another. All right. So my my question to you is, because I personally was trying to struggle with this because my wife asked me and I couldn't give her a straight up answer. So I'm going to ask you, what is a perfect example in the Bible of someone who illustrated this, the type of character that you talked about in the book of James? So this is just one of 
one person that I can think of. And not only is he a great example, but he literally, if you listen to the sermon, I talk about a paradigm shift. And a paradigm shift is when things are in a crisis and they get reset back to zero. And people's lives, they change. They're altered after. And this is going to be one of those situations where our lives are altered. If Again, if you want to hear more on that, go back and listen to last week's sermon. It's available on our, on our uh, Facebook page. Just click the link above. Click the link. But the person I think that's easiest to point to is Joseph in the Old Testament. Why do I say that? So here, Joseph is an outsider, meaning he's not an Egyptian, and he has been brought in through a a series of circumstances, which I'm not going to get into, but he is in a paradigm shift because the world has experienced a crisis of hunger, and when there is a crisis, people panic. And so it is this Joseph that helps Pharaoh figure out how Pharaoh should successfully deal with this crisis. And listen to how Pharaoh, listen to the words of Genesis 41. I'm going to read 41, starting in verse 33. And now let Pharaoh look for a man discerning and wise, and set him over the land of Egypt. Let Pharaoh take action to appoint overseers in charge of the land, and let him exact a fifth of the produce of the land of Egypt, and in the seven years of abundance. Then let them gather all the food of these good years that are coming and store them in the grain houses for food in the cities under Pharaoh's authority and let them guard it. And let the food become as a reserve for the land for the seven years of famine, which will occur in the land of Egypt so that the land may not perish during the famine." Now that proposal seemed good to Pharaoh and to all his servants. So in other words, that was Joseph's suggestion during the paradigm shift on how to handle this food crisis. He was suggesting that they start rationing food so that when things get really bad, there will be enough for everyone. Notice what Pharaoh says next. Pharaoh says to his servants, Can we find such a man like this, and whom is a spirit so divine? So Pharaoh said to Joseph, since God has informed you of all of this, there is no one so discerning and wise as you are. You shall be over my house, and according to your command, all my people shall do homage only in the throne. I will be greater than you. I just, that's pretty powerful. It is. I mean, you want to talk about the man, the myth, the legend? That's Joseph. Yeah, so in in, in your opinion, he that is... Like, if you want to take what James is talking about, what you talked about, and apply that to a biblical character, if you want to see a good example, that's where you need to go. I think look right to Joseph. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's all right there, and, and, and all, all the, the, the parts are there. There's the wise person, there's the, um, the character, there's the discernment, there's the leadership component. Um, it's all there. It's it's cool. There's a loving loving your neighbor. It's all there, and it's encapsulated in a person, mm-hmm. you know. And that that's really cool when you can have these ideas, which are just ideas. But when someone embodies those ideas and lives them out, it's a neat thing to be able to point at someone that has them. I agree. Awesome. We good? Okay. Well, I hope you enjoyed this podcast. I know I enjoyed it. Um, please subscribe to our YouTube channel at Faith Presbyterian Church, uh, PA, uh, or visit us on our website, uh, faithpc.net, and uh, stay tuned for more uh, for more info, more sermons. We got a lot of good stuff in the works. Um, other than that, please stay safe out there. Enjoy the week. Uh, ration that toilet paper. If you have a lot, give some to those who don't. Do the Christian thing. All right, guys. Have a good week. Bye.